I V M. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode forty-five of the Fighting Goat, where your host and host. Somesh, the superhuman camera, and Arjun, aka Mystic Chip, Chip Alkati, will bring to you some of the best action of 2022. Yes, that's the first episode of the year. We're going to be talking about the top prospects of 2022 and a lot more after this short commercial break. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On advertising is dead. Varun talks to Anil Vishwanathan of Mondelez India. They discuss the beloved Cadbury brand and its campaigns over the years. On Speakeasy, Dheeraj is in conversation with Ranjit Pratap Singh, the CEO and co-founder of Pratilipi. Hey, that's our parent company. They talk about how Ranjit tapped into the need for non-English storytelling content and created a company with over 30 million readers worldwide. On Smarter with Sid, resolved to have better resolutions. Sid tells us how understanding the difference between objectives and outcomes can be liberating. On Tere Mere Raste, Kesha takes us to Dubai, world of skyscrapers, world-class infrastructure, glittering malls, and massive boulevards. On the Life Manifesto, Zarina goes over the concept of self-abandonment. She explains the do's and don'ts of dealing with it. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows, for that matter, do tell a friend. The word of mouth absolutely is essential to us. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms that you've been listening to. And also, I'd like to ask everybody to check us out on YouTube. We have a number of channels going. You can find all of them on ivmpodcast.com/slash/youtube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week: Cred, Bank of Baroda, Coinswitch, Kuber, and Intel. Thank you so much for making this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode forty-five, the first episode of two thousand twenty-two of the Fighting God. Arjun, aka Mystic Chips, is with me, yes, and your sir. host and host, Somesh, the superhuman camera, is here as always. Mystic Chips, Happy New Year to you and all our Happy listeners. Happy New Year, bye. Happy New Year. It feels so good. I'm still a little hungover from the New Year parties <laughs> and the parades and the excessive drinking that started <laughs> from the 22nd. You know what? The funny thing that somebody told me is that you know that most people make this fundamental mistake of taking yeah. leave. On yeah. you know from like the twentieth onwards, but I've realized that long ka twentieth moral... November onwards. No, twentieth December November. So <laughs> only I take twentieth November onwards. I've realized you earn so much, no? <laughs> I wish, yeah, yeah. Inshallah, one day and all. No, but I'm saying that people I've realized since the twentieth or twenty second, na are in yeah. no mood to work anyway. Absolutely, are in no mood to work anyway. So they are already sham. it like aadha kaam low motivation everything and especially 25 tar ke baad to nobody wants to no chance no ever chance. so i have realized that now on now we should take chuttis from the 1st of jan onwards <laughs> because that that 1st of jan ka jo wo churi baithi hai na sir ke upar Haan. which is ready to Haan. fall the knife is about to drop you know everybody is like oh crap we have to go back to work we have to go back to work is the 1st of jan so i yeah. think everybody should take holidays from 1st to 10th of jan but you instead know instead of doing 20th to 1st absolutely 20th to 2nd absolutely it's if a great you, idea if you guys agree please write to us tag <laughs> us hashtag us and write to iit and iim that have their main exams on 1st of jan seriously kon <laughs> who has i mean dude i am a jan i was born in i'm born in jan and i know every yeah. one of my bloody birthdays have been fucked up because <laughs> exams every time <laughs> pehle hafte mein rulao handy sab logo why don't you just do it in the last week of december but speaking you of know, the last week bahut cheez hue hai yaar ye last week mein god so much has happened so much has happened this last week no no in- no but first thing we have to tackle sorry before we even get to anything the first thing we have to tackle G- is the ongoing feud between dana white and jake paul oh my god you know in fact after many many years i think dana's new year must have been absolutely ruined because of jake paul dude see there are two schools of thought here okay so yeah. one school of thought is like Ooh, people, a lot of chashme nikal gaye chashme nikal gaye i mean serious moment and all <laughs> <laughs> no there there are two schools of thought here because some people are saying that listen dana white you are a multi billionaire you have achieved everything in the world that you want to achieve Yeah. Why are you mula going with somebody who's a some twenty three year old Disney star who's making his way into the boxing arena? Yeah. That's on yeah. one hand, people are saying that. On the other hand, people are saying that the fact that he's getting through to Dana is achievement in its own. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Because you got to give say what you want about Jake Paul, dude. He's actually doing. Look, man, he's he's brought to light the wage disparity. Yes, yes. He said, and so did the fighters, Askren, Woodley, and all these guys have said that they've gotten paid more in that one fight than they did in yeah. like ten fights. Right. You know, while right. they were in the UFC. Right. And so maybe I don't know. What do you think? I think this. I think it's bugging Dana White so much. I think the fact that is bugging Dana White so much is maybe because there's a little bit of truth to what he's saying. So see, typically what happens in this case, according to me, again, I'm no expert. I'm in neither of their shoes. But what is happening right now is there are some of these guys who can bait their opponent really quickly, like Conor McGregor. I feel Conor was in no place to even fight Khabib stylistically or any of that sort. But he went through with that entire PR machinery of his. The same goes with Aldo when he fought Aldo. Yes, he came out victorious versus Aldo. But there's this way to bait your opponent. And when you bait your opponent, it's always not a competitor. It could be a promoter. It could be... you know somebody else it could be you not know, two politicians baiting each other it could be two sports persons baiting mm-hmm. each other it could be you know kohli versus bccai so it's all about baiting i think jake paul threw the carrot and dana took it and no but you know, it's the things he's saying now you i know, mean also the, also the, the acquisitions you know like sorry to cut you off but also sorry, sorry. The, you know the acquisitions are so intense that if dana doesn't respond he could be in a fix where people say oh he's not responding because jake paul may be right no the thing is it's also the it's also the challenges that he's giving him he said na if you agree to do this if yeah. you agree to increase the wage gap yeah. i will quit boxing i will retire from boxing and join the ufc for a one night fight correct jorge masvidal mma rules right right and now that is a very attractive offer it for is a, it is a highly attractive offer for somebody to say okay take it because the boxing world will be more than happy saying acha chalo one ek subject band ho gaya and then Correct. the mma world will love to see you know hore masvidal beat uh, jake paul up but if so, you think he would beat him because you know jake paul has been so smart the team that is behind him is so smart they are beating the former champions who even if jake paul has a 50 50 chance to beat them he has been beating them he's beaten four out of four he's been knocking them out you know not he, beating knocking them out he's beaten them you know he beat that right hand you know, he beat ben askren fair and square he beat tyron woodley twice fair and square the first time debatable yeah. but second time though there was no debate second time was no, a boom knockout no debate you know man you know logan paul is now fighting mike tyson you know so that you I see don't how, know you know you see how these people are kind of you know building themselves up and honestly i don't know who's behind him there there's definitely some you know, there's a former you know, apparently there's a character called the warlock who is the former accountant or financial head of the ufc yeah Yeah. During the Fertitta's time, who yeah. was fired by Dana, who is apparently handling a lot of Jake Paul's business, is well, handling the business end of uh, of Jake Paul's company. Correct, but along with think, Taylor and all these guys, do you think there is somebody who's putting money on Jake Paul trying to shake up the UFC? I don't know. No, I see. You know? I don't see it. I don't see it as you know. Look, man, somebody like Dana always has a target in his head. Dude, he's the yeah. biggest, biggest promoter in the world, and yes. he Dana is so smart. He knows all this already. Yes. But the point I'm trying to make overall with this uh, entire conclusion is that the fact that it's affecting him so much. Like we've seen a lot of people go after Dana White. Yes. We've seen a lot of fighters come after Dana White. Mark Hunt did it with his own lawsuit. We've seen uh, other fighters do it with their lawsuits. We've seen uh, fighters talk trash to Dana. We've, but it's always come around, you know. Like it's come full right. circle. Like at the end of the day, it's become normal. Like Dana is like, okay, fine, ठीक है यार चलो बोला बोला. But the fact that this kid has gotten so under his skin to the point where Dana is now coming online on Instagram, doing lives and spewing. Yeah. He's look like he's visibly affected. Yeah. And it's uh, what a lot of people, what a lot of websites are reporting is that it's not a good look for such an achieved. He's the biggest promoter in the world in MMA. It's yeah. not a good look for him to play all these dumbass games with this guy. He no, shouldn't you know, be. He shouldn't be going down to that level. Is what people I, are saying. I wouldn't agree. Why? Because if you see the strategy, what the Paul brothers have applied, they have first beaten credible ex UFC names wrestlers to be in a see whatever it is, whatever it is. You know, they have beaten credible names. One yeah, of okay, it is a names. one of it is a former champion that Jake Paul has beaten twice, Tyron Woodley. Hmm. 
Of course, yes, fag end of his career, all of that. But he still had a legacy. He he has still beaten. He was champions. losing five fights before that, and had know, just got but, recently knocked out by Vicente Luque. But you know, people will not see that he was at the end of the day. He was a belt holder in the UFC that got beaten Agreed. by YouTube star. Agreed. So Agreed. so what the Paul Disney have done, Disney star Disney star sorry Disney, Disney star. star so. what the paul brothers have done they have first built their names on these washed out stars to eventually be credible to talk versus dana white you know if he would have talked in before his first fight or maybe after his first win also i don't think anyone would have taken him seriously but the fact that he's doing it after beating these guys up you know he's proudly saying that yes we only had 65000 uh, pay per view buys but uh, there is a That was the you know, funny I, thing, yeah. You know, I still made ten million dollars. Like, how much have your fighters made? Correct. No, he, and he, the, that, he's that's... still focusing on the, you know, wage gap. And I feel a wage gap is, you know, almost like Amitabh Bachchan in the seventies in the movie Coolie. You know, where he's fighting for the union. Correct. You know, and people outside the theater still idolized him because he was fighting Dude, for the union. That's the thing, and it's working. You know, it's ba- you know, it's basically what Mark Hunt is doing. You know, it's basically what Mark but, Hunt is doing. But legally, Jake Paul is knocking people out, and then but Jake Paul is Jake Paul is doing what Mark Hunt is doing into ten thousand million. Yes. So yes. the the thing is that 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 a lot of people are waking up to that aspect, and it's even France. Cis Nagano, who has one fight left on his contract and is defending his belt on the twenty second yeah. against uh, Cyril Gunn. Yeah. Dana White told him the same thing. I said, if you think you can make more money outside the UFC, if you want to get into boxing, go. Yeah, you're free. Yeah, you're free. You'll be released from your contract. You are willing. You're free to do whatever you want. And right. I think win, lose or draw, the entire Jake Paul saga will give hope to a lot of fighters now outside. Yeah, who will say, okay, take care. Maybe I'll come to the UFC, build up my name a little bit, and then get yeah. out. Yeah, you know, do my five fight contract or whatever. Or you see, like for example, a Sugar Sean O'Malley today, a little He's, page Van Zandt. You're saying. He's like like a page band sign. She got famous. She started losing. She left and is making more money in BKFC. All right, right getting her face beaten. Right. But somebody like somebody like say Sugar Sean O'Malley. Okay, your favorite yeah. You know, yeah. fighter in the world. <laughs> say what you want, but he's making the right moves. He's flying in private jets. He's yeah. getting paid six figures when he should be for somebody who's not a ranked top fifteen. He's getting paid a million dollars. Yes, for a fight. So he's yes. clearly doing something right. So somebody like him. In the next six, five, six fights, he's what twenty-three years old. Yeah, twenty-three. By the time he's twenty-seven, by the time he's twenty-seven, twenty-eight, when he'll be kind of like you know, if he's, if he's peaking, say, like assume he peaks in the next two, three years. Yeah, he'll be coming down that slide. Yeah. By the time he's thirty, he can totally jump into boxing. Correct. He can totally go into some other things. Correct. Because he anyway has a striking boxing. Uh, approach correct. So I can see a lot of fighters taking a page out of the Jake Paul book, and he and Jake Paul has said, "What? Okay, tell me something. Now, what stops them? Scary scenario. What stops Jake Paul tomorrow from five years from today? Yeah, saying that I start my own promotion company, saying, 'Come, guys, I'll make you guys money.' Isn't Khabib doing that? And that's why there's some friction between Dana and Khabib also. Khabib, I don't know what Khabib is doing to be honest, because Eagle FC is just launched. We've not seen a promotion. We've not seen a fight yet. Yeah, but yeah. we don't know until until we see the fights and until we see the events go down. And I don't think the purses will be revealed that soon. Right. So we right. don't know exactly what the business model is. It might be pay per view points or something. But I don't know how they're going to go ahead. And I don't know if they're going to be pay per view. It's if it's going to be pay per view model. If it's going to be a pay per view model, it might just be network TV model. Right, right. You know, I mean, we don't know. We don't know how that's going to go. But honestly, man, this there is just so much happening, and twenty twenty two has started it's off with just such started. a bang. It's just started. It's not such even. A bang. It's not even been the first ten days of twenty twenty two, and we've had so much to already discuss and talk about. Right, and you know, honestly, we've been talking about so much. I've been talking about. You know, we had our last episode, which was great. It was brilliant. We talked about the most insane, insane fighters and the fights that happened, and that allows me to segue into our next beautiful conversation, which are the top stars that are really going to shine. The top. prospects that are going to be coming out of 2021 and 2022 so stay tuned we're going to come back after a quick commercial break don't go anywhere you've been listening to mystic chips and the superhuman camera only on the fighting goat on ibmpodcast.com what if you could relive some of the biggest and most public feuds in indian corporate history we are back through the window of time to see who among hul or nirma stood on top Or who was more dominant between Tata Motors and Maruti Suzuki? Tune in with me, Ambi Parmeshwaran, and me, Anupam Gupta, on Bank of Baroda presents the Last Brand Standing, where we talk about two brands vying for the top position and what their journeys were. Every Tuesday on the IBM Podcast app 
or website or wherever you get your podcast from Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 45 of The Fighting Goat, where Mystic Chips and Superhuman Kamra are going to discuss the top prospects in the world of mixed martial arts for 2022. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are in 2022. Happy New Year to all the listeners out there. Hope you guys are safe. You guys are jabbed. And we have to wish our entire crew, man. Happy New Year, Suroni. Happy Happy New New Year, Year. Shitej. Happy New Year, Harshal. Harshal, Shitej, Suroni and Shubhankar. They all are wishing you a very, very happy New Year. Yes, it's a, you know... Everybody needs to stay, jab, stay safe. healthy. Please mask up because this jab is not going to hurt. Yeah, I mean, come on. Man. Needs to you know, Omicron is is in the air. Everybody is we're hearing news about uh, you know the amount of cases that are rising, and people are people are panicking, right? You know, over and over again. But luckily, you know, the right. government's all over it, and hopefully, we would not have to go into another lockdown. So please wear your G damn mask. Absolutely. <laughs> but those those that do not want to get locked down in the same cage as some top prospects of 2022, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be speaking about the top so prospects in the first world one of mixed martial arts all know. in 2022. So the first one we already know is uh, Somesh's mm-hmm. favorite. Mystic Chips. <laughs> Who is your topic? <laughs> no, no, your your no, the, the, no, your topic is Sugar Chono Oh Mali. God, I want to call you such names, but I can't. Sugar Chono no, Mali there are such is such names I want to call bro. you, but on air I cannot do. The greatest fighter to have ever lived, <laughs> according to Mr. Sumesh Kamaram, uh, and the greatest fighter to ever be. Like, you know, you know, I've got these life-size cutouts and posters of him in my room. I can, Seriously. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it, bro. I can see it in the back there, but he's waving also. <laughs> I, I, and nowadays, Mr. Kamran has started doing his his number one move also. His, you know, his dribble, dribble and shoot. He started doing that as well. Every time he goes. But yeah, a Oh my God. Mystic Chips, who's your top pick for 2022 of right. the breakout stars in the world of mixed martial arts? I think, I think I've got my eye on Benil Dariush. He is going to be oh, one of the wow. most insane uh, oh, breakout wow. stars. He's right on the cusp of of something big. He's got a big title shot. Uh, so you can, you know it can honestly you can actually call it a uh, interim title anyway between Absolutely. Islam Makachev and Benil Darish. It is that big a fight, and it's so heavy in its title implications. Whoever wins will get that next title shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not disagree. In fact, my first breakout star that I thought about for the year 2022 is going to be Kamzat Chimaev. I think this man is going to create waves. He's fought COVID. He's beaten COVID. He came back versus a smashing performance versus Li Jing Lang. And 2022 is going to be his year. The best part is he can move between that welterweight and the middleweight category. So he's going to pick yeah. and choose. And now that he's healthy and he's back, I think Kamza Chimaev is going to create waves. I think he's already, you know, he's already tweeting stuff like, you know, there's an event. I don't know why I'm not on it. I'm completely healthy. I'm ready. And looking at his last fight, which got over like, you know, within under two minutes, I think he's completely hale and hearty and ready for this. So Kamza Chimaev is on number five for me as the top breakout star of 2022 to look out for. For me, it's, uh, I think after that is somebody who lost actually, is a guy called Chris Moutinho who fought uh, uh, against, oh, wow. um, uh, against Sugar Sean O'Malley. But in that loss, he showed so much of heart, so much of toughness that I think that guy is, if he just polishes his skills up a little bit, may yeah. not be the breakout star as such, but he's certainly a top prospect that could come into the fray within the year. You know, he's got that, that kind of toughness, that kind of, that kind of tenacity cannot be taught. That kind of heart versus that kind of heart in that fight, you know, it was, it was crazy. You know, that there's this, there's this very old school Hindi movie line that goes like, Uski har maybe jeet thi. Jeet ne bhi har aur usko bazigar kehte. Bazigar kehte. He's bazigar only, dude. He's bazigar. So, so are you terming Chris Mutuinho as the bazigar of UFC? I, I think, I think he has the ability to be the bazigar of the UFC. <laughs> That's a brilliant pick. On number four, for me, is going to be Islam Makachev, who I feel is going to be a breakout star. Again, mm. 
he has a huge task of Beniel Darius in front of him. Hmm. But somehow that entire camp of Khabib, you know, with Javier Mendes out there, with, you know, DC always kind of praising them. Hmm. I think something, you know, somehow, some way, they win. So, I don't know how... But I think Islam Akachev is stands on number four for me as the top prospect of 2022. I think he's going to create magic. Okay. For me, number three, I would certainly uh, look to uh, the Armenian Giga Chikatse, who Ooh, is wow. an insane, insane, who's on an insane role. His last fight, he beat the legendary Edson Barboza with his famous combination, the yes. Giga Kick. That kick to the liver has been so on point. And has been so vicious. It's just met his mark. And nobody who has, he, he has faced has, you know, the way he's improving, the size he has for that division. He's yeah. just, a, he's a prospect and how, man. That Absolutely. guy is perfect for that division. He is looking so good at Feather. And uh, honestly, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see him who he's up against next. You know, Giga Chikatse is fighting on the main event of the first card in 2022, which is on, on the 15th. On 15th or 16th yeah, of yeah. this month. So, honestly... Who is he fighting? Have, I cannot recollect. Uh, I don't know. But I know that Giga Chikatse is uh, fighting. The good uh, part is UFC just released a video on their Instagram. And what you spoke rightly, Mystic, is the fact that those leg kicks are landing so clean. And there's a video where he's fighting in the apex. And you can hear each of those shots. It goes, oh, bang, my God. Bang, bang. And I'm baseball like... Baseball bats. Oh, my God. God, those are baseball bats hitting, you know, someone's torso. It's so, so, so lethal. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> so beautiful. It's a beautiful sound. And if it's not hitting you, it's a beautiful sound. Yeah, when it's not hitting you, it's a beautiful sound. And uh, after it hits you, you can't hear any sound. No, no, you can't. Because you'll be numb. <laughs> you will become so numb. Speaking of numb, my third on, as in not my third, on number three for uh, me is Paddy, uh, uh, Paddy Plimbit. Plimbit. Yeah, his name is really tricky. It's a tongue twister. Plimblet or Pimblet or something like that. It's it Pimblet. P I M B L E T T. Paddy oh, Pimblet. Pimblet is Paddy Pimblet is is someone who, for me, is another breakout star because he came into the UFC as a signee from UK, and he just he was hyped. But he has this little characteristic about himself. You know, that little nerdy guy who always yeah, came he first. Does. <laughs> From the first standard till the 10th standard, he always came first. But actually, you know, he's like a mass murderer or something of that sort. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you know, I remember this, this hair and all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, he looks really, he looks really unassuming. Yeah. <laughs> but he looks, he looks nice. I like him. I really like him. You know, I could, a good guy. you know, I could see, I could see Paddy Pimlet serving me beer in some bar in, you know, Manchester or something. <laughs> Dude, you saw, I, I love the interviews when Paddy Pimlet and, and Michael Bisping is, is, is totally, you know, obviously they're from the same country. They're both Brits. Yeah. And it's just that the love for him directly is so <laughs> yeah. evident. I like it. I really like it. You know, so, you know, so he's honestly, a prospect for sure. You know, for me, Paddy is uh, one of those. So his his debut fight in the UFC was versus a gentleman called Luigi. And he was uh, signed on. It was, I, I don't think he had too much time to even prepare for this. It was like a last minute replacement. He came hmm. in and he shot the show. Yeah, he did. He, he did. shot he the show, you know. So he has this quirkiness. He has this And he can talk to, as well. Yeah. He can, that's the best part. He can talk. He can talk. That's it. That's and a he pulls one. crowd. So, yep. number three for me is Padlet. Yep. Uh, moving forward for my uh, second position, there are a lot of good contenders and I'm just I'm just trying to think who comes to mind more and more. Is yeah. I would go with uh, the psycho Sean Strickland. He is... Oh uh, my he's God. on his way up. He's on his way up. Wow. And he's fighting Jack Hermanson next. And now he's fighting Jack Hermanson next. And say what you want about the guy. He's got a very... You know, he there's no secrets to his fighting. Yeah. Then, no secrets to his fighting. Yeah. He's got a very simple walk you down, take all your punches and beat you up kind of style. You know, this gentleman, as you mentioned it, he, for me, he's one of the last threads of the old school MMA that is left. Yeah. He's only 30 years old. He's had a four year layoff. Right. He was supposed to fight Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold's welcome fight in the UFC was versus Sean Strickland and Luke Rockhold pulled out. 
And Sean Strickland said, I don't blame I, him. <laughs> I knew this guy will pull out because he doesn't have the guts to come in that octagon with me. He's a guy who had an accident. He was out for four years. He yeah. trains, you know, he trains with people like Matt Lindlin, Dan Henderson from that old Team Quest camp. Oh man, I remember and, that camp. You know, that entire attitude of, you know, training twice a day and you know sparring maybe once or twice a day <laughs> along with the training and just going along ahead. with the along with the cardio along with weights you also you know just... i have never seen Sean O'Malley scared but Sean O'Malley said he's never going to fight on the same card as Sean Strickland because he's so scared of him in an interview he said i don't trust Sean Strickland <laughs> Sean Strickland is the kind of guy who could kill me and say i don't want two Shawns on the same card it's <laughs> a good one. I don't want two Sean's on the same card. <laughs> you know, so that's the kind of psycho he is. You know, I so 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 agree with you, Sean Strickland. Oh my God, what a beautiful pick! So go ahead, sir. Now it's your it's you your know, number two. Number two for me is going to be the current interim heavyweight champion, Cyril Gan. Cyril Gan, Gan. I think Cyril Gan has Sihil. Gan. Sihil Gan, Sihil Sihil Gan, Gan. <laughs> according to me, has the ability to become a top prospect in the year 2022 because the current heavyweight champion is anyway showing his displeasure. There is clearly no number one contender out there. Cyril Gan holds the belt. You know, people like Alistair Overeem, who would give Cyril Gan a tough, tough, tough fight are out now, of the Overeem UFC. Overeem would have been a very good matchup with Gunn. Exactly. You know, very, Overeem very is good. out. Junior Dos Santos is out. So there's nobody left at heavyweight. There's nobody left except for the former champion, Stipe Miocic. So Stipe I think, is you know, I think Cyril Gan has the ability to really put on a show. I don't know how the fight will go. I'm a huge fan of Francis Ngannou. I don't know how it will go, but most of the pundits Saying Francis is going to lose and he's exiting the UFC. Cyril Gan stands there as the undisputed champion. Maybe Derek Lewis has a shot at him or Stipe Miocic, but I think Cyril Gan is holds number two in my eyes. I think Stipe has the best chance at Cyril Gan, to be honest, because Cyril Gan is somebody who we've yet to see struggle with a grappler. And he's not Correct. faced any grapplers right. yet. Right. Right. And and uh and you know, and Francis Ngannou, as tough as he is and as, as hard as a hitter as he is, we saw him against the Stipe fight, his first fight with versus Stipe, where he yes. got out-wrestled and out-muscled. And yes. I always felt, and, and I don't know how his mindset is, because going in now, this is his last fight, he's been having troubles with the organization, the management, he's been hinting at signs to leave. So I don't know where his mind is going to be. That doesn't Very sound true. like a man who is, uh, he doesn't sound like somebody who wants to come and defend his belt like one brutal warrior. Right. I, mean, I may be right. wrong. I may be wrong. Maybe he wants to leave on a higher note. Maybe he's going to win the belt and, you know, unify the belts and and uh, and say like, now come on, screw you. Yeah, now I I'm want that here. money. Now I'm out of here. Or give yeah. me the money or I got a call from 1FC or whatever. Right, but uh, right. I'm just seeing that, I'm just seeing, at least that's my personal opinion. I'm just seeing that Cyril Gan seems to be the more motivated out of the two people. But Absolutely, been, yes. Absolutely, yes. I've been wrong before. So, you know, you never know. Absolutely. So, my and number two pick is Sihil Gan. Sihil Gan. I love saying his name also. <laughs> <laughs> Chalo, and finally, in top position, well, he's not yet a UFC fighter, but he is one of the biggest nemesis and the only people to be, beat Israel Adesanya is a kickboxer named Michael Pereira. Oh, and he wow. has been signed by the UFC. Oh and my God. He is making his way to the United States. Oh as my speak. God. That is brilliant. You know what? This thing of, you know, a lot of people can argue by saying that, oh, he beat him when he was not in his top form, etc. No, but there's dude, always there's, there's always that aspect that this guy has beaten me. There's always that fear. Israel will always have that imprinted in stone in his mind that this dude, guy has beaten me. He didn't beat me. him. He didn't beat him. He knocked, knocked him, him unconscious. Cold. He knocked him and cold. And whoever this man has touched has been knocked unconscious. Whoever this man has touched. This man yeah. has been brutal in his execution. His striking is on another level. Now, there's a big argument that can be made saying that, you know, oh, the transition from ring to cage is very different. The transition from yeah. this to this is very different. But Adesanya did it. So Israel did it. But again, there are very few fighters who did it successfully versus the ones that did it unsuccessfully. True. We spoke about this in Mirko one of our episodes. 
and all of we that. We talked so, about Kroka, Fedor, Badum. Yeah. So few guys did it. Few guys couldn't do it. It's I would right. say it's it's seventy thirty. Seventy couldn't and thirty could. Yes. And then you see guys like Mike, and and it's going to play on Israel's mind. Absolutely, because it will. The kind of striking that man will come, and Israel Alsan is not going to shoot for a takedown with him. Correct. Sure. I mean, you know, Michael may not even get the chance to meet Israel because of the wrestlers that exist in that division. But you got what if? But what if? What if that fight <laughs> is made? What if that fight? He comes in and he blasts the shit out of somebody, and in four ounce gloves. My God, I can't even begin oh to think the kind God. of power he will bring to that division. It's going to be ruthless. That is going to be insane. And, yeah, but you know that's what I'm. I'm all. This one is on the fence because you never know. I said the same thing when Gokhan Saki was coming to the UFC. Gokhan yeah. Saki, he was is a high level K1 kickboxer yeah. who has knocked the lights out of so many great fighters. Been through the entire was only man who he lost in the final of the uh, of the Glory kick uh, kickboxing series to Alistair Overeem, which is yeah. understandable and because obviously is yeah you know, next he's level. Watch out so. also himself. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, it's going to be very. Interesting to see, and it'll shake wow. up that middleweight division. Absolutely. So Pereira is on number one yes, for sir. the Mystic. For me, the man that holds the mystery on number one spot, I feel, is Yiri Prohaska. Man, Yiri Prohaska. You know, Yiri Prohaska is someone who's going to, you know, he's that kind of guy who will be between two trees, and he'll be looking. And when his time comes, he'll just wash with his with out. his warlock choti, you know. Yes, with that choti, you know, like with that antenna of his that he has. <laughs> so, oh man, for me, the breakout star of 2021, I feel, is going to be GD Prohaska. Yeah, who's because he's come not out broken there. out yet. I mean, he's won a few fights. Yeah. He's won. He's won all his fights by finishing. He's finished yeah. all his fights. But he's yet to become that top prospect, that money-making top prospect. Well, I feel what did it for him was the knockout versus Dominic Reyes. Jesus Christ, that was a mauling. It and was after that, you know, people said, man, this guy needs one of the top five guys. Dude, Dominic to... Reyes is top five. Yeah, Dominic Reyes is top four. Correct. Who's Absolutely. left in that division? Hold on. There's Jan Blahovic now who's no longer champion. Yeah. There's Jan, there was Glover. There, there was, is Glover. <laughs> correct. There's Jan, there's Glover. There was Dominic Reyes. Yeah. There was, he is definitely top four. Correct. You know, so, so there could be this Jared Cannonier kind of guys, you know, moving from 185 to 205. Jared Cannonier will be too small so, for uh, Prohaska. You know? Prohaska is a so, big light heavyweight. Correct. Like, like Dominic Reyes is 6'6". Six, six. And Yiri was the same height. I mean, yeah. he, antenna yeah. plus antenna was 6'7". But Correct. <laughs> but I'm saying body wise, size wise, lean, yeah, he's big, huge. thick he's huge. muscle. You Jeez, know, and his fighting style is so, you know, unorthodox. It's so tricky. It's so weird that Dude, he's, know, in, he's in front of your face and he eats everything you throw at him. And yeah. Dominic hit him so hard. Yeah. So many yeah. times. And Dominic being a wrestler could not even take him down because he's so yeah, unorthodox. He moves in a certain pattern which you can't read very easily. You know, I don't even think he knows his own pattern. That's why the opponent can't read it. So, you know, you know, we were discussing, remember we were discussing before the Glover fight of, you know, if, if Jan Blahovic versus uh, uh, Yiri would have to happen. I would have, yeah. I, and remember we said, I said that uh, Yiri would win. And now yeah. in hindsight, definitely Yiri would win. Absolutely, yes. So for me, number one, prospect of 2022 I feel is going to be Yiri Prohaska. I think you know that's a fight to be made as well. Jan Blahovic versus Yiri Prohaska could be a great re-entry for 2022 in that light heavyweight division. Right. But that being said, we have now concluded our top prospects though there are a lot more top prospects out there. I'm sure we've forgotten a lot of names. We're still reeling from the holidays. It's still been a, it's been a long break. Well, long break means a hafta, okay? But though it feels long. <laughs> but my point is that please write in to us, write in to us to all our titles, all our handles, and everything, and we will share them with you in our next segment when we talk about the next upcoming card on January fifteenth. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. You've been listening to Arjun and Somesh only on the Fighting Court. We'll be right back after these quick messages. Don't you think that if everyone around you is getting smart, you better be smarter? Hey there, I'm the traveling professor Siddharth Deshmukh and I'm back with season 2 of my podcast to make you smarter. Smarter with Sid. What's this season's focus about? Well, it's about 10 minute nuggets that will make you stand out at work. It's time to go from smart to smarter. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday and become smarter with Sid. 
ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the fighting goat where your host and those sobesh the superhuman camera and arjun aka mystic chips chipper kati are going to be discussing the next fight card ufc fight night ufc number 1 Calvin Qatar versus Giga Chikadze. <laughs> oh my God! Calvin Qatar versus Giga Chikadze is going to be. I don't know. Actually, I think I know how it's going to go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I think how it's. I know how it's going to go. Can you imagine? Calvin Qatar is coming back after the longest layoff of a year and a half. After that, sadly to say that. beating that max holloway put on him right it was a downright beating that max holloway i've never seen max holloway in that demon mode correct you no know? and we saw him put on such a war against uh, calvin qatar and calvin now is going to be facing off against one of our top prospects in uh, giga chikatze how do you think yes. that fight's going to go man man i think it is so insane calvin qatar as you rightly said he's back after this long break he got mauled by max in Correct. his uh, previous fight i don't know how his mindset is going to be on the and on the flip side giga chikatse is on a tear 14 and 2 he's been running through all his opponents he's got his sniper shots ready oh man it's going to be a tough one uh, my heart is leaning towards giga chikatse unless and until calvin qatar has reset completely Yeah, you never know. It happened to Yair Rodriguez as well. We thought that yes. you know Max Holloway would, you know, would run through Yair Rodriguez, but that was not the case. It didn't Yair happen, yeah. gave Max such a tough fight with those yes. creative strikes and those angles and the leg kicks. It was beautiful to watch. You might see a different Calvin Qatar, but if you remember the fight against Max, there were moments in the third and fourth round. The Max Holloway did a lot of damage to the body of of Calvin Qatar. Yes, yes, he and did. Giga Chikatse has that one shot stopping power when he kicks to the body. Correct. So if he gets it, and I'm sure across five rounds he will find that opening. You know, in fact, we saw this happen to Jeremy Stevens and even Gaubar Saroni, where they got you know their body has been punished to a level that one clean shot. And exactly. The body shuts down. Matt Brown as well. Matt Brown. Matt Brown as well. Such a devastating yes. fighter, but hit the body. Oh man, he goes down. It's over. It's over. And so yeah, yeah. but again, getting hit by Seroni or Aldo is a big deal, dude. Aldo big body shotting you. It's come on. <laughs> it's not called a weak body. It's just getting hit by Aldo. <laughs> If Aldo is leaping left hook that comes into the liver, followed up with that right leg kick. Cheese anybody oh, will go down dude absolutely absolutely <laughs> mystic chips what's your pick you know we've got we've got Caitlin Chukigan on the card we've got Brandon Royval on the card oh man i love so, Brandon Royval you know so it's a very very good card it's happening on the 16th of January first uh, card of the year first card of the year and we are making predictions only for the main event of the evening let's go Calvin Qatar versus Giga Chikatse in a five round main event in the featherweight division it's in the 145 pound division my heart says one thing my head says one thing no, you can't do say... this you can't do this in a new year like <laughs> this come on you know you know people say new year new me come on eh wo sab ha ghanta i mean ghanta sorry i mean what bullshit i mean to say that no no i'm sorry i'm always going to be the fence sitter so that's good that's how it's going to be you think i can stay mystical like this if i had not fence sat <laughs> I'm not changing my answer. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking so, really hard. So, so what's your heart saying and what's your mind saying? Heart says uh, Giga Chikatse is going to knock him out in the second or the third. But oh, wow! Uh, my mind says uh, Calvin Qatar will learn. Will have a very good strategy. He's also a very smart featherweight. He will make yeah. this. The more you grapple with the striker, it makes him trepidatious to come in and shoot. True. That's a very, very interesting start, analysis. If he can start timing takedowns for those kicks, Giga's main weapon will be gone. and if you can take away those kicks from giga chikat say this becomes a very different fight very true and this is going to be at the apex so ladies and gentlemen be ready because you're going to hear some shots being thrown and oh, some yeah. leather hitting apex hate, hitting the skin stand you know? the so, apex yeah. have they started crowds at the apex again i think there are going to be crowds for this one you I mean what so. you mean you mean sabke like bhai behan dost and mama yes yes it's not called crowd i'm talking about proper <laughs> open crowd <laughs> Well, it, But, it is going to be at the apex with a limited capacity. My pick is clearly going to be towards Giga Chikatse. I think Giga Chikatse is going to turn this around and prove why he's the man of the moment. I don't know how oh, he's man. going to do it, but he's got five rounds. He can take his time. He's If an he intelligent fighter. That, his cardio is to the roof, so I don't see any you know stress out here for Giga you know, Chikatse. If he does fight, that, but I think Giga Chikatse will take this one. If if Giga does that, we can see maybe uh maybe a fight in June or July with uh, Brian Ortega. 
with versus Giga oh, Shikatsu. Wow, yes. Holy yes. That would be a yes. great fight. Oh, you know what? Screw that. Brian Ortega versus Max Holloway part two. Why that not? That would be awesomeness. It Why would be not? so much fun. That would be so much fun. But even yeah, though Max you know, Holloway is at the at the cusp of a title shot, we've got even Yair Rodriguez who can take on Giga Shikatsu after this. Absolutely. But for that, Giga needs to get past a very, very tough Calvin Qatar. You heard that, right? For me, it's Giga Shikatsu. For Mystic Chips, his head says Shikatsu. His mind, <laughs> uh, his, his heart is saying Calvin Qatar. So let's yes. see how this goes. You will see this Absolutely. on the 16th of January only on the Sony Sports Network. Absolutely. So if you agree with Mr. Somesh or you agree with Mr. Chips, you have your chance to contact us on social media. You have your chance to tag IBM Podcasts on Instagram and on Twitter. My handles are on Instagram is at Arjun Chips and on Twitter it's at the Mystic Chips. Go Somesh. Well, you can hit me up on Instagram, somesh.camera. And on Twitter, it's somesh underscore camera and IVM podcast across all platforms. Absolutely. So tag us, hashtag us for your chance to win some awesome, awesome merchandise. So if you choose Giga, if you're right, we'll send you a t-shirt. If you're wrong, we'll still send you a t-shirt as long as you come talk to us. Because that's what we're here for. In the new year, we're going to be listening and talking to all our fans a lot more than we did last year. So don't be shy. Come out and reach out to us. Don't be shy. (laughs) And nobody. (laughs) Now, as the party still continues at the IBM studios, we want to wish you a great, great happy new year. And a very, very safe one. Go get that jab. Go get the booster shot. Go take care of yourself. Wear triple applied mask because I'm sure none of us want to go into a lockdown anymore. So stay safe. Follow the rules. Listen to the government. And always keep listening to The Fighting Goat only on ibmpodcast.com. Eventually, you'll see the end of your childhood. Get accustomed to womanhood. Enjoy the experience of sisterhood. Might get to wifehood. Or not. Choose motherhood. Or not. You'll learn to define your personhood. Earn a livelihood. Change the neighborhood. And get rid of the falsehood that life post-academia is easy. So join me, Ritasha. And me, Ayushi. On a journey from station starting point. To station, um, what now? Next station, Pudin Station and hopefully Agla Station Adulthood Fresh episodes out every Thursday Namaste, this is Cyrus Brocha I am part of the government cancel culture program to remove rubbish off all the different streams available So what we have is all the collected rubbish we put together on our show It's called Cyrus Says It's on IVM Podcast You have to watch it and listen to it It's on our app It's on our website It's on the YouTube channel It's on Facebook There are many different ways Don't bother me and ask me how uh, you have to find out. We talk to different personalities. Many of them are known. Some are just people we meet downstairs and invite them up for chai. But the point is, it's fun and it's very therapeutic. So please join in and listen to Cyrus Sess. 